I'm going to lay out some verses here that I'm going to back up my statement that you really can't lose that adoption. It's really, you really can't. So comment that down below, but let's start with Jesus' words. John 10, verse 27 through 29. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. If, uh, I'm sorry, he says, I give them eternal life, and they will never perish, no, not, no, and, and no one, rather, will snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. We read all throughout the New Testament, but I'm going to mention a few here, that belief in Jesus, profession of Jesus, is salvific. And once you, know, and once you believe and once you declare and once you profess, you're saved. You are saved saved. And if you're saved, how can then you be not saved? I mean, you've been saved. I mean, so, and so we read in Romans 10 verse 13, for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. That means when you come to judgment, if you called on the name of the Lord, you'd be saved from your sin and from the punishment and from the wrath. Acts chapter 16, verse 31. And they said, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be what? Saved. Romans chapter 10, verse 9 through 10. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified. And with the mouth one confesses and is saved. 1 John chapter 5, verse 13. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life. You've already been reborn, and now the life you're living is eternal. The Spirit is our guarantee. There's a host of verses, to, uh, there's a host of verses in the New Testament that say, if we have the Spirit, then we have a guarantee that we will be, you know, saved. You know, we will be there on the day of redemption. So, I'll quote 1 John chapter 4, verse 13. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us his spirit. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13 and 14. In him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him were sealed with the promise, the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it. To the praise of his glory. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 30. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 21 and 22. And it is God who establishes us with you in Christ and has anointed us. And who has also put his seal on us and given us his spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. If God guarantees that you'll be there on the day of redemption, then he's a liar if you're not. A guarantee is a guarantee. But lastly, I'll, I'll mention that we are the elect. If we believe in him, that God, then God has chosen us. And if God has chosen us, then how can we fall away? He's either chosen us or not chosen us. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4 and 5, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. By our own works, no, because he's going to impute us onto us, his righteousness, and in the judgment, we will be holy and blameless before him. And if we're holy and blameless before him, we have the inheritance. If in love he, predest he predestined us for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will. No, this is not the only time that adoption and inheritance is brought up in the New Testament. Paul uses it a ton. Second Timothy verse, uh, chapter one, verse nine, who saved us and called us to a holy calling, not because of our works, but because of his own purpose and grace, which he gave to us in Christ Jesus before the ages began. Mark chapter 13, verse 20. This is Jesus talking. And if the Lord has not cut short the days, no human being would be saved. But for the sake of the elect whom he chose, he shortened the days. Romans 8, verse 28 through 30. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to his purpose, for those whom he foreknew and also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, in order that he might 
be the firstborn among many brothers, many brothers. We will be Jesus's brothers through this adoption. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And also, and those whom he justified, he also glorified. If we've been called and justified, then we will be glorified. Romans 8 concludes. And this ties back to the verse I mentioned earlier. Who's gonna con- who, who condemns you? Who brings a charge against you? Read this. Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? Jesus is the one who died. More than that, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us, who shall separate us from the love of Christ, shall tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, danger, sword, as it's written, For your sake, we are all being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am unsure that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us, the elect, from the love of God and Christ Jesus our Lord. So this adoption cannot be revoked. Nothing can separate us.